How are you guys doing? This video is uh, a video that I've been wanting to make for a while. Uh, it took me a while to prepare for it. There's been a lot of talk on the internet about what programming language is better than other languages. And people always love the language they busted their ass to learn, and they're always like, well, mine's better for this reason, and mine's better for that. So uh, I thought I would chime in. Um, no language is really better than another language um, across the board, but um, I, the metric I always use is how fast is it and how performant is it. And um, you could say how easy is it to work with, but I would contend that the three of these languages have an equal amount of complexity, give or take a couple things like pointers. Um, it's time to settle the damn score <laughs> as far as um, which language is faster. Um, it's time to get to the fucking bottom of this. So uh, I'm going to walk you guys through a simple recursive example uh, using three popular languages, Java, JavaScript, and C++, and we're going to find out which one uh, is best suited um, for this type of algorithm, which I find is a common algorithm that tests um, stack usage, memory usage on the heap, uh, and also on the stack allocations and just in general computation complexity dealing with things like bits and bytes. So let's get started. Let's begin. The name of the program that I use to test these three languages is named Speedy Pisshole. And what Speedy Pisshole does is takes an image in the form of binary representation of the, of the actual bytes or pixels of the image in a tightly packed array and starts in the center of the image and then recursively flood fills out and branches out until it fills the entire interior region of the image. This is a very recursion heavy algorithm and I purposely did not optimize for stack space usage. I wanted a algorithm that truly put the, uh, the language through its paces as far as grunt work, computing over a large area, a region of memory, um, and things like that. So uh, let me show you what the algorithm looks like. We're going to start with C++. In C++ I take an argument to the image in the form of an SDL surface which inside of it has access to the byte array, which is basically the pixel array of the entire image in the form of 32-bit integers per pixel. What I do then is I also pass in at any given point, since this is, a recursion, this is a recursive algorithm, I start it in the middle of the image, but at any given point um, down the recursion tree, uh, we know where we are. Then basically what I do is I have some uh, base cases for recursion to ensure that I don't run off the edge of the image. I retrieve the pixel and make sure that I have not set the uh, 30, 31st bit, or the, uh, the leftmost bit of the, uh, the color, um, which is a flag that determines that I've already visited or processed this pixel. If that's the case, I, I return from the recursion, or it's another base case. Um, then I check to see uh, the red pixel, which could really be any of them since it's grayscale, but I wanted to put some bit shifting in there to test the language. I test the... Uh, uh, the, red, the red pixel to see if it's greater than um, 240, which means it's completely white. And if it is, we continue onward. And the way, uh, the way I do that is I mark the pixel red and then store the pixel back in the pixel array. If uh, we have hit a wall, which would be a dark pixel less than 240, I flag again the pixel was already visited, which I, I do again for the red case up here. I store it and then I return, which allows me to basically hit my base case that we've hit a wall and go back out. Then I do the recursive branching, which is in every, in one of every eight direction, I branch out recursively um, and proceed to continue the algorithm. I do some basic SDL initialization, including loading the image in as a ping, but the only part that I actually time is the flood fill itself. So basically, this, these three lines right here are the part that matters for the actual timing of the algorithm. I'm going to run this so you guys can see it. Average, C will get roughly uh, 7 to 9 performance or speed of uh, algorithm. So let's just for, for purposes, uh, general purposes say that we're at about 8 milliseconds here for C++. Good. If I was to run this algorithm again in uh, JavaScript, um, let's go ahead and look at the JavaScript code for the algorithm. So here's the JS code. The first thing I did was ported the algorithm one for one uh, from the C++ code and tried to run it in Chrome. This did work as far as it being parsable, but what I noticed immediately was no matter what the hell I do, I cannot get Chrome to allow this to run with enough stack space so that it doesn't crash the browser 
or not really crash the browser, but stop the script and say, you ran out of stack space. And because JavaScript is a web language and it's supposed to be secure and prevent you from using up too much of the user's RAM, it is, as far as I know, impossible, regardless of all the Stack Overflow posts that I've read, to increase the damn stack limit to anything that allows me to do, run this algorithm usefully. This didn't work, uh, and passing an argument to Chrome, as people said, would work, that didn't work either. So basically, I had to completely rewrite the algorithm using an iterative approach uh, dealing with um, an actual local stack object. Uh, for those that um, do not know much about how to rewrite recursive algorithms iteratively, uh, it's a useful skill to have for reasons like this, uh, in cases where you absolutely are screwed and you do not have enough stack space. That's essentially what I did. So I converted everything into a while loop that uh, loops on whether or not the stack has some length. In other words, it's not empty. I then retrieve the arguments from the stack. Everywhere I would have returned, I pop and continue. And everywhere I would have called the function, I push with the arguments on uh, a Java array, which has then grown. I would have assumed the performance of this would have been god-awful compared to C, um, but as far as JavaScript is concerned, I actually found the performance to be reasonably okay, still much slower than C++. So if I run this, I get roughly anywhere from 140 to 120 milliseconds. So let's just go ahead and call this 120 as an average. Yeah. I'll be nice, and I'll be nice to JavaScript and maybe give it 115. 115 milliseconds for JavaScript, which is roughly 10 times slower than C++. Let's see how Java fared. Java used to be a much slower language than it is now. I still don't like it very much. Um, you know, I tend to stick with languages that uh, don't have garbage collection, which I can go into in a whole other video. Both JavaScript and Java have a garbage collected memory model, which I'm going to go into in just a second. For now, let's look at the Java code for the algorithm. Uh, one thing I glossed over in the JS example was I don't feel like parsing a ping file or uh, reading a ping file in Java or JS. So what I did was I spit out the binary representation of the uh, ping file in, into a binary raw file and then just read those byte arrays in for both JS and uh, Java so that I could just get straight to parsing the, uh, the pixel data um, directly, which is what I'm trying to measure. So let's go to the Java. The Java class that is most important is called floodfill, and what floodfill is is it has a public static method, which basically does the exact same thing C does, with the exception that um, the byte arrays are using Java byte arrays instead of uh, pointers in C, which are more or less the same thing. So the algorithm, you can tell, looks very similar. There really doesn't seem to be too many gotchas here, with the exception of the fact that there's no such thing as unsigned integers in Java, which was kind of a pain. But most of the bit flags and stuff that I'm doing kind of held up and behaved exactly the same way, as far as I can tell. And uh, another issue I had was that Java's big Indian by default, so I had this ask my byte buffer that read in my raw file to pretend that it's a little Indian um, machine uh, when it's retrieving the pixel data out. Uh, once I did that, I was able to time at the very beginning the flood fill algorithm. Um, or I was able to time the flood fill algorithm and only the flood fill algorithm and run that in Java. So what does that look like? Well, I'm going to run this from the command line, compiling it first. And then this, that little argument right here tells Java to give me 10 megs of stack space, which is what I had to do to make this work. Uh, on average, I can see that Java gets very consistently 20 milliseconds. Uh, a couple times it'll jump up to 23, 22, depending on the state of the catch in the machine, but I'll be nice to Java too, and I will give it roughly 20 milliseconds, or twice as slow as C++ running the exact same algorithm. Now here's where things get fun. Um, this is not just a test of how the language computes, where C++ seems to be uh, reasonably faster than the other languages, but it doesn't blow them out of the water. Let's see what the hell happens if we actually dirty the heap at every single t uh, recursive node that we visit in the entire application. I created a struct up here called data, and what data does is every time uh, an instance of it is created, it allocates 16k on the heap. And to make sure that and see that I actually use that memory, because in some times, in some cases on a machine, uh, Allocations don't actually hold any weight until you actually dirty the page by setting them to some value. So this ensures that the memory truly is demand paged out and the actual CPU freaking uses it. So this is the uh, pattern. Create uh, 16K and then mem set it to zero bytes so that it's actually set. And the way I do this is at every single visit, uh, to flood fill, I create one of these things on the heap and then every single time I would have returned, I delete it 
manually in C++. I'm avoiding use of smart pointers here so that I don't have any more overhead than I need to incur. I just want to see how the heap performs. And in C++, the most efficient way to allocate memory in a bunch uh, in this manner it would just be to use new and delete. So that's what I'm doing. So let's run this again with the heap allocations turned on. 16K. What I find in this case is that this varies a lot, but 17 around the two second range. Uh, I'm going to run it one more. Seems to be getting roughly seven. Yeah, so we'll call this. I'll take the highest value. I'm not trying to be nice to C++. I do have a bit of a bias here, and I don't want to accentuate it. So let's just call this 1780. Oops, I didn't mean to save this. So C++ flood flow plus significant. It's a significant heap allocations. I'm sure this actually ends up using uh, quite a few megabytes of RAM since I'm doing 16 at every single node visit. And as I recurse down, the memory does not free until the recursive function returns. And if there's a lot of additional recursive functions down the uh, recursion tree, this memory can grow quite quickly. C++ is the only language I'm testing here that has synchronous memory management, meaning not garbage collected. So it'll be interesting to see how JavaScript performs under the same situation. So if I was to load up my JS page and allocate uh, 16K at every single iteration of my uh, iterative function, in order for me to mimic the same behavior that I get in C, I have to basically create one of these data objects and then attach it to the, uh, the stack data, which is basically going to be just setting into variable the P, uh, my, uh, my uh, per pixel stack um, object in JS. And because there's no such thing as memset in JS, the only way that I can actually um, initialize the byte array to zero was actually looping. I did quite a few stack overflow Googles for JS on how to efficiently fill an array buffer, and this is the only damn way that I can see that you can do it. Though, uh, in all fairness, when I commented this out, I didn't notice much of a difference in the performance of uh, this running, so I wouldn't really harp on this too much. Nonetheless, when I run the... Uh, heap test with Java, uh, or sorry, JS, uh, what I get are results that uh, I believe are considerably slow. So we're just going to let this run here. So it's running. Still going. From what I can tell from my experience, JavaScript does not like lots of allocations of little objects that have any kind of memory footprint footprints at all. I can chalk this up to the fact that JavaScript uses a graph-based garbage collection algorithm where you have to crawl trees of objects to find out which objects are still in use. I can imagine attaching this to a recursion, recursive algorithm makes JavaScript, uh, for lack of a better term, completely shit itself. So it's still computing here. It will finish. Uh, give it some more time. I noticed the effects of me, so we're looking at about 46 milliseconds or sorry, 46,000 milliseconds, or 46 seconds, uh, if I believe that's right. So uh, I don't know how many times slower this is. I guess maybe uh, about 20 times slower than uh, C++, if I believe that's right. Um, it's pretty damn slow. Uh, the effects of JS um, are much drastically reduced when you reduce the amount of memory allocated uh, per object. Um, but I'm going to harp on, or I'm going to go back to the reason why I did this here in a second, because uh, we are now ready to move on to Java. So doing this in Java is pretty simple. I have a class in Java called data, and all it does is create a byte array on construction and then fill the array uh, to zero. That's all it does. And to make sure Java does not try to optimize the uh, creation of the object out, since garbage collection is a bigger deal in Java, it might have this more aggressive optimizer, I pass data as an argument to uh, every single call to flood fill so it propagates down the recursion tree much so it has a life cycle much similar to, to the C++ code. So I went ahead and added this and I'm going to recompile my Java code. And when I run this in Java we get a speed of somewhere I believe it's around 4. Let's warm the catch and run it again. So we get about 4 milliseconds, or sorry, 4,000 milliseconds or 4 seconds, which is roughly uh, twice as slow as C++. I actually expected this to be much worse. Um, I'm going to run this one more time, but uh, because the C++ code ensures all memory is freed by the time the function recurs, it would only be fair to force Java to run its garbage collection 
our garbage collector before we uh, consider that it's finished. So I'm going to run this one more time. I don't think this has a significant impact, which leads me to believe that there might be some cheating going on uh, with the Java optimizer since it knows we're not really using this memory. I'm not really sure if I believe this number. I had expected uh, Java to be much more than twice as slow uh, than C++ um, when doing garbage collection. The only thing I can assume is since Java is not managing a low-level heap, it's not susceptible to heap fragmentation. It's essentially just creating these objects and then throwing them wherever it wants and forgetting about them, and it will run its garbage collector whenever the hell it feels like, and the hell with the consequences if the memory usage grows, uh, grows too high. Uh, the reason why I believe that's the case is if I actually reduce the number here uh, from 16384 to simply 128 bytes, you will actually find Java will start to be uh, almost faster than C++ with these objects. And the only reason I can chalk that up is I believe the garbage collector isn't running uh, when the optimizer finds the memory isn't being used. Um, but in the 16K case, C++, which is, in my opinion, uh, a more robust test, uh, C++ seems to be faster across the board. Um, it seems to be consistently twice as fast as Java and uh, anywhere between 10 times and 20 times faster than JS running the flood fill algorithm. Um, this video is not to incite a riot or to get people pissed off. Um, I find a lot of value in JS. It's taught me uh, rapid prototyping for uh, certain algorithms that would be harder to read in, in, uh, in C++. Uh, Java, uh, I really actually don't see much of a use for, for developing in Java at all anymore, uh, mainly because of uh, other languages really seem to supersede it as far as um, features and capability, but I thought I would include it in this video. Um, but stick with the language you like best. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate that if performance is important to you, then it might be worth writing your code in C++ for stuff you're actually going to ship and release. Maybe rely on the other languages more for things like rapid prototyping and just getting your ideas in an easy-to-work-with place. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, goodbye.